And so let's talk about my final picks for Miss Supranational 2024. The preliminary competition was a defining moment in my list as it gave me a preview of their performances during the finals. My criteria for choosing my final top 15 are the overall confidence and elegance of these ladies as what the evaluation is all about. So here they are. At my number 15 spot is Yuki Sonoda from Japan. So, so happy my friend Yuki had so much fun performing during preliminary competition. She was very light to my eyes when I watched her turn here. She was a bundle of joy in her swim turn during with those sassy moves, twirls, hand gestures, and winsome smile. Even in her Sakura-inspired evening gown, she was very light and lovely to look at. She's very charming and perfectly styled all the time. So I'm pretty sure she also nailed her closed-door interview as well. I really hope this lady will be given her due recognition for all her efforts here in this year's competition. And now we go to my 14th spot and I'm giving it to... Aletea Ambrosia from the Philippines. Yeah. Given her top model citation last weekend, there's so much momentum on Aletea's per prelim performance next. However, I feel her prelims performance did not generate the same impact like how I would have envisioned her to do so. Because the thing that impresses me the most with Aletea is her Filipina beauty. There's no mistaking for that Filipina beauty on the international stage, especially on that side of the world where our type of beauty gets to be so much appreciated. However, I wish that facial beauty could have been aided or matched by a strong pasarela performance as it was just very safe for me. It also felt her moves were very calculated, especially when she did her turns during the swim, the swim round. So I hope she could have given more energy to her presentation, in other words. So let's go now to her evening gown. While I feel her evening gown wasn't the best choice, she still exuded elegance and confidence on stage. If it, if it were up to me, I would have wanted her to wear a gown instead that would emphasize her curves to give her a sexy shape. Just like the sexiness of her polarizing Larry Espinosa gown during the top model round. And at this point, I know the pressure could really get into a candidate's head, which is a result of the, of the pageant's hectic or rigorous schedule. Because at this point, the pressure could be affecting Aletea's presentation. As the, win, as the winning aura that we saw in Aletea during her, the Miss Philippines Nationals last year hasn't been there. And I don't know if it's a result of nervousness or overthinking, but she has to shake it off to get that aura back as early as now. And so at this point, she must be reserving her energy and her best pasabog yet for the finals. And I just hope it's not yet too late where it matters the most. But who knows if she could do an Ariela Arida in the competition this coming weekend. And I wouldn't discount that possibility as well. And now we go to my 13th spot and I'm giving it to Andrea Saenz from Mexico. This lady was such a pleasant surprise in the competition. Her stunning beauty, alabaster skin, and great pasarela skills were enough to put her here in my list. As she is really beautiful and I'm glad to show and I'm glad that she chose to do a pony and a bun on her hair to really accentuate the beauty of her face. She's really divina for me. She was just very impactful in her simplicity. And now we go to my 12th spot and I'm giving it to Alexandra Hanusari from Finland. This lady just looks like an angel and even if she just shows up with her beautiful face, smile, and dainty moves, or even, even without makeup on stage, it will still be a hit among us. Because this girl just radiates in simplicity and just allows her beauty of face do the talking all the time as she was just radiating all throughout. She was very graceful, gentle, and natural with her moves, which only is just right with that classic beautiful face. And for me, she really stood out in her own right and should be commended for just radiating in simplicity. And now we go to my 11th spot and I'm giving it to Chanel Deal from Curacao. At this point, Chanel has nothing to prove anymore as she is a queen in her own right and it was noticeably evident with the way she moved on stage during the preliminary competition because there is just this unmistakable aura that you see and feel the moment that she went out on stage to perform. She took her time to walk which all the more made us feel her elegance. The, the confidence after all these years of competing in a lot of pageants is still there. And now we go to my 10th spot and I'm giving it to Fiorella Medina from Puerto Rico. 
I have to admit, I kind of overlooked this lady at the onset of the competition, but she proved her might and force when she showed up in the preliminary competition performing spectacular with her strong stage presence. Her catwalk and twirl here during the swim round were on point, and her elegance in her evening gown with that cape cover at the start was just enthralling. And the way she removed gently and waved it to the air to give drama was just very fluid. And so it didn't feel like it was forced. So you could really feel that she wanted to win. As so I can really feel her energy from my phone screen. But alas, I don't know. There are just so many girls in contention for the title this year. So I'm not sure if her overall presentation here can overtake the heavy favorites at the moment. And now we go to my ninth spot and I'm giving it to Mayo Sandar from Myanmar. Oh my gosh, guys, I'm so in love with this lady. And I can't believe Myanmar is sending a very strong delegate out of Miss Mayo right here in this competition. Since they were all walking with no sash, you can really mistake her as Sanatina with that undeniable beauty and strong stage presence. And so I enjoyed her performances in both rounds, but I really have to single her out in the evening gown round for coming out with such a fiery and sexy performance in that figure-hugging see-through this because it really fit her like a glove. And it's a surprise that she has not been garnering so much attention, at least among us pageant fans in Southeast Asia, as now I feel she's so underrated. So she really deserves her spot here, or if not, in the top five, if she could still deliver the same fighting performance come finals night. And now we go to my eighth spot, and I'm giving it to Victoria Larsen from Denmark. She is such a pleasant surprise during the preliminary competition. And so I didn't know she could register this strong impact when it comes to her presentation skills. Like in both rounds, I already felt her power the moment she did her entrance at the start of both of her walk. Her turns, her walk, the way she did her eye contact was just very commanding. If only I may have to nitpick though, it's just I wish she could have ditched the train of her gown because I feel like it did not contribute much to the whole fierceness of her presentation here. It was more like an afterthought for me when the gown was made. But other than that, she did so well here apart from being such a commanding speaker as evidenced by her Supra Chat performance earlier. So we should really watch out for this lady as she could really penetrate in the top five. There could be a big possibility. And now we go to my sixth spot and I'm giving it to Kasama Suetrong from Thailand. Hands down, guys. Nobody can dispute the Pasarela Queen title from this lady as evidenced by her strong performances in prelims. She just looks incredibly smashing in every turn, pose, smile she did on stage. Like she was really on fire. On evening gown naman, even if she was noticeably restrained, to showcase her gown and elegance, you can still feel her power. She really nailed it. But why am I only ranking her here at this position? Because I feel it's only about her catwalk and styling that we are learning so much from this lady and I have yet to feel her aspirational side as I really want to get to know her better, like I said in my previous content. She looks good. Because let's face it, guys. She, looks, she already looks good. She looks amazing. She dresses well. She walks well, but I want to feel her impact beyond the stage two for a change. And now we go to my sixth spot and I'm giving it to Brioni Govender from South Africa. Oh, how I love how this girl was glistening in her presentation during the preliminary competition. Brioni was sparkling as she worked that stage with her charm and poise. But I just noticed how subdued she was during her presentation here. I don't know if it's a conscious effort to differentiate her performance from her previous international pageant stint, but it was really showing. But make no mistake, guys, ah, I love her styling here and her green fringe dress so much. Sobra. I wish she could have turned it up around knowing this is a crucial portion of the competition. Hence, I'm only ranking her six overall right now. But who knows if my observation is wrong and is... Brioni is perhaps just reserving all her energy for the final night. And now we go to my top five and number five on my list here is Lidi Vu from Vietnam. I have been keeping an eye on this lady for quite some time as she seems to be getting a lot of fan hype. I have to admit though, I was not impressed with her initial outings during the pageant, but I feel she ain't going nowhere just yet with her sexy performances during the preliminary competition. She was a pleasant surprise here. I like her, for one, I really like her straight hairstyling in swim, and I thought she was a very fierce vixen in it. 
The wink in the end of her presentation here was very sexy too. In evening gown though, this was her, I feel this was her best moment as she struck a healthy balance of her sexiness and elegance. Maybe it helped that she wore a beautiful gown which, with a fur shawl so it really gave her royalty feels. And I feel she wore one of the best gowns of the night, if not the best gown of the night. She could, I'm telling you guys, she could really make a three-peat for her country in the top five this coming weekend. There's a huge chance that she could also make it a top five. And now we go to my fourth spot and I'm giving it to, no surprise, Harashta Zara from Indonesia. This lady is not really going nowhere with her scintillating performance during the preliminary competition. I especially love her side post turn in swim as she showcased a glimpse of her fun self here. Like I thought she showed character there. Now you can really see that she was clearly enjoying herself there and did not mind the pressure at all if she was feeling any. And so for her evening gown presentation naman, well, I believe it wasn't the best gown choice for her, she still carried it with so much playfulness too. The way she moved her right arm shoulder to highlight her toned arms, diba, was really playful. And for some reason, I like it. A super chat, let's face it, is have, always having fun on stage. And I feel she is a definition of it. So looking at her body of work or collective showing in this pageant, she has been very consistent with her striking looks since arriving in Poland. Not only serving looks, but showcasing her engaging personality as well. She also nailed a lot of key pageant, a lot of key pre-pageant activities like talent, supra chat, and influencer challenge rounds. So it's really a crime not to put her in the top five. In fact, I think she could also win the title this year. So seeing her so prepared for this pageant is a testament how much her organization, Puteri Indonesia, puts so much focus and emphasis or emphasis on this pageant system. And so the end result is a polished and winnable Harashta Zara right now. And now we go to my third spot and I'm giving it to Sonal Kukreja from India. I'm so blown away by this lady's sheer beauty. That face is to die for, and so it was just such a joy to see her glow while performing on stage. The hair was cascading, the smile was captivating, the walk was very enchanting, so everything was just natural. She wasn't there to impress us, but to thrill us. And I also like her gown choice, that it's, as it made her a standout easily with that yellow color, which all the more contributed to the joy that I am feeling for this lady. Because she really reminds me, to be honest, so much of Rachel Peters and Harnas with that smile and aura. And so I hope Sona wears a gown as impactful as this, as it could really increase her chances to win her country's third Miss Supranational Cup. And now we go to my runner-up of this list, and I'm giving it to... Isadora Murta from Brazil. Oh, I'm so lost in this lady's beautiful eyes as it's so hypnotizing. There is no doubt that this Brazilian lady will continue the good showing of her predecessor in this pageant. Isadora Murta is really a goddess and so it is noteworthy to see that she is backing up her favoritism for the crown by delivering a very solid performance during the preliminary competition. And so I'm so in love with her turns in both rounds. In swim, I love how she turned her head when she did a pivot on her catwalk while that black wrap as she showcased a grand reveal of her figure hugging silver gown really stunned me. She gave us a show right there overall. Brazil has not won a crown in this pageant system so I wouldn't mind if she finally be the first Brazilian to do so. And finally, we go to my overall winner of this list, my Miss Supranational 2024. I'm giving it to Justina Sednikova from Czech Republic. There is nothing more to say about this lady except crown her as early as now Miss Supranational. Justina really looks like a Barbie doll from head to toe and I'm so glad that she found the right perfect styling for her in this segment of the competition. That straight hair really accentuated the beauty of her face and that walk in swim was very splendid. Her walk in evening gown felt like she was floating and gliding on stage probably aided by the fringe details on the lower part of her dress. So it looked very dreamy and effortless. And so honestly, that kind of beauty is really to die for. Supremely beautiful. And although I don't know much anything about her, it feels like she has a pleasant and amiable personality. Even though she looks like a Barbie doll in real life, 
she's, there seems to be an air of relatability that I am feeling from her. Czech Republic has never won the crown ever in this pageant system, and Europe has never won in more than a decade in this pageant system. And so it just finally feels right if this lady will take it all the way for this continent this coming weekend. And I just realize it now. Oh my gosh, guys. If she wins, and we all know that the reigning Miss World is also from Czech Republic, it will really be amazing for that to happen as, with really, as it will really solidify Europe's imminent domination or rise in the world of pageantry in recent times. Diba? So there you go, guys. What do you think about my list? Does it match yours? Well, if it isn't, let's agree to disagree na lang about this list of mine. You have your list, I have mine. So let's respect each other's opinion here on my page and be mindful of the comments towards one another that we are doing here as... Let's just learn to respect each other's opinion. All right, guys, let's all watch the show together. Sunday dawn here in the Philippines and cheer for our favorite delegates to win. All right, guys, until my next video. Bye!